Yo, what's up everybody, Rashawn Miller here and welcome to the Why You Stressing series. Uh, this is a series where I interview individuals that I know, and but then people that I don't know and about their profession, but then how they add eustress to their life. Um, especially, we're also going to focus on the different things that are going on in their profession that people may not know stress them out. So today, I got my homeboy Mike here. What up, you, baby? <laughs> chilling, chilling, right. chilling. Okay. So, my boy Mike, Michael Clark, man. Um, I guess, first of all, we'll start off like, introduce yourself, bro. So, I'm Mike Clark. Um, personal trainer, professional trainer, 44 years old. Been training for, I've been certified since 2003. Been here in Charlotte training since 2007. Um, I love it. It's a great profession. You know, Never. you wake up and do what you love. Continue doing it. Definitely, definitely. So the thing about Mike, man, Mike is the owner of this gym here. We're at Ultimate Fitness. Uh, this is the dungeon, man. It's the green. We're in the green room right now. Uh, so the thing about Mike, man, I met Mike back in 2007. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in 2006. But when I met Mike, when I moved to Charlotte, uh, Mike became my trainer. And I don't even think Mike, you don't even, you didn't even know half the stuff I had going on, did you? <laughs> yeah, but he took me under his wing. Uh, I became his little homie, and uh, yo, he that working out aspect for me really helped me when it came down to my treatment and just being able to focus on myself physically, uh, and it allowed me to disconnect from all of the stuff that I had going on in my head. Uh, but one of the major things we want to talk about here is so April is uh, National Second Chance Month, right? And uh, this actual week here that we're going through is uh, National Reentry Month. And one of the things I wanted to share with Mike is, uh, well, Mike wanted to share about, yo, tell them about your journey. How did you get to the point where you're being a personal trainer, but then also you're running your own gym? Okay, so um, as you were growing up, you know, growing up uh, doing things and ended up taking the wrong path, ended up going to prison. Ended up, you know what I'm saying, about to spend my life, I've done 16 years. So, throughout that journey, I always been, you know, an athlete, working out. And um, while I was in there, like, a lot of that stuff just came easy. Just started getting big, started getting big. And then when it started coming time to do the, um, the book work part, that came easy as well. So, I took physiology anatomy, took nutrition, um, took stretching courses, and then, um, Took a course. It was a uh, actual certified personal training course, NFPT, National Federation of Personal Trainers. So um, after I got you know certified as a master trainer, I came home and I started training. And um, I seen Shaw like you know it's North Carolina, it's a different city. So I seen it, it. You know things were just growing and growing and growing. So it was just natural for me to jump in and just do what I did. And um, it kind of like. Things like, like I said, I met, I met Rinshaw and um, we got real cool. Like I said, but I didn't know what he was going through. He just being there, like, you know, I'm like, this is like young, you know what I'm saying? He's going hard. Like, he's just going to get it, going to get it. But now I see he was just releasing certain stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same way when I was in, I was releasing certain stress. So I'm like, I'm, I'm working on extremely hard because I'm, you know, keep my mind up. Okay, I'm in here. I can't, I can't go home. Right, right. And I'm releasing that stress. I'm right. taking out, you know, working out, working out. A lot of times we don't realize that that release has to happen. If it doesn't and it stays bottled in, we don't know what it takes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to release. Definitely, definitely. It's interesting. It's funny to hear him say my government name because he's never called me that. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so like I got the nickname S Dot here in Charlotte, man. I got that from 2007, 2008, man, my boy Dredd gave me that nickname and it just stuck with me. Uh, but one of the things, man, I got something that I wanted to show you that you didn't even know I was bringing. So, like, we want to talk, I want to talk about this right here. Ah! <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah. look, I kept that joint, man. Oh man, that's a long time. <laughs> Look at the say the date on that joint. Um, no, nah, it's it, it's it's in the. Uh, I wrote the name. Okay. Yeah. Three six two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven, bro. That was ten years ago. Yeah. Ten years ago. Wow. Yeah. Man. 
So think about you. You said that having that release, or especially when you when oh, you was man. away in prison. That's crazy. Uh, like, what did that mean to you? Like, I guess we. So, so the back, back. Well, I'm gonna let you tell. It. Let you tell. It. Okay, so you know I'm just sitting there. I, I get a um, I get some mail, and I see it says Rinshawn Miller. Like, Rinshawn Miller. Keep in mind, I just said you know what I was talking about. Stop. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm like Rinshawn Miller. It still's not here. I'm like, let me open it up. My new name was Sean, so I'm like, but I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking him at all. I opened it up, and it said, Mad Money. I'm like, all right, go a few people, okay, they, they call me. So I'm like, but let me let me read it. And then after I start reading the first couple lines, I'm like, man, I'm like, this young guy, man, too long, man. From this time, you know what I'm saying, to now, it had been four years. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, um, we took the time out to write up, and you know, he's talking about his journey, what he's doing. He's talking, you know, about to go study abroad, mm -hmm. um, you know, about working out. So I mean, I, I'm still doing the House of Pain. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, he stayed there. You know, just, just tell me his journey. You know what I'm saying? As I'm reading, I'm like, wow. I'm like, to me, you know, it's easy to send a person money. It's easy to go. I'm going to rest you and go ahead. I'm sending. You know what I'm saying? You know. $25, $50, get it over. But if you sit down and take the time to write a letter, like for men, like sitting down and writing a letter, that's almost unheard of. Mm -hmm. Out here, that's almost unheard of. Like you sit down and take time, like, like, like man, I'm like, man, I had to make a real big impression on his life in order for him to, to look me up without, you know what I'm saying, sit to like, uh, uh. knowing what, like, knowing when I met, let me get, let me get, let me Google this. So that started making me think about everybody else. Y'all guys, I don't know y'all don't like me. You ain't sit down. I'm like, okay. So I got now I got to do re inventory of everybody that you know. I come home, man. What's going on, man? I'm gonna miss you. Don't miss me. You couldn't miss me. You know what I'm saying? You could have known. You could have reached out to me. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. But I had somebody write me a letter, man. Like really took that time and wrote that letter, and that meant a whole lot. I, I told him that. You know what I'm saying? Once before, I said, man, like you don't know what it meant for you to write that letter. Just, just out the blue, because people say, um, you know, I couldn't find it. Man, we got Google, you can find anything now. Yeah. Anything. You pour the name up. Yeah. Oh, you gonna, oh, I know he's, oh, I know he's trying to prison. Okay, let me just pour that up. There he is. Right. Um, yeah, man, that, that meant a whole lot. You still got this. Huh? I still got that, Joey, bro. Man. Like, I, I read it, I read it last night, and I was like, damn. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize it was 10 years, though, bro. I ain't realized it was 10 years. Yeah. So, I... It was 10 years. Yeah. That's how fast time flies. Yeah, yeah. But I say all of that to say, man, we, we wanted to just even just highlight the aspect of, you know, a lot of our brothers. Um, are, uh, wait, I got to keep this. <laughs> a lot of our brothers are, you know, locked away and they get forgotten. Mm -hmm. You know, and we know life still goes on, but, like, just... The reason why I wrote that letter to you is like you had came across my mind. And I like we always use nicknames. So I didn't even know his last name. So I had to hit my homeboy up and was like, look, yo, what's what's mad about his last name? <laughs> he was like, yo, Michael Clark. I was like, alright, alright, alright. So I'm gonna just Google the MA search, search. And when I found this, and when I found his uh, you know, his location, the address and all of that stuff, like I was like, yo, my grandma home me a letter. Granted, he picked on me because of the fact he was like, oh, you sent the snail mail. We got email up in here. But I was like, I didn't know. <laughs> but now, but still, it's important to me taking the time out to be like, look, it took me probably, i say 30 minutes max to look him up, write the letter, and drop, drop it in the mail, man. But I wanted to let him know that I was thinking about it. No matter, you know, where he's lied up, no matter what he did, uh, like all of that is known and void. I still love the guy. You know what I'm saying? So I had to reach out and let him know that. Uh, but like, how important is that for us on the outside to continue to reach back to the people that's on the inside? Man, that, that's very important. Like, you never know, you know, what the, like, so, you know, people are like, okay, you got stress out here. But in there, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different stress because you, you're closed in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people, they already, are probably already at that breaking point. Mm -hmm. And then they're in there, they're like, man, like, I don't, you know, I don't know, like, who's caring about me now? Mm -hmm. You know, man, I forgot about. Mm. And you're, you're going through that process, and then for those that 
are coming home, if they never, you know, heard from them, they come out, now it's bitterness. Right, right, right. Now right, it's, right. and you're like, but man, what, I ain't doing nothing to you. I ain't doing nothing to you. I got your mother, man. I ain't this, I ain't that. But they're like, well, when we, was, when we was out here, everything was good. Right. You know, you could, you know what I'm saying? You would find me, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to make money and doing different things. Oh, you need something, you would find me. Right. Now, right. you can't, you don't, you don't know how to find me. Right. Right. But you know I'm back here. But yeah. you don't know how to find me. So, that bitterness breaks relationships. Mm -hmm. You can, um, you know, it's some, it's some relationships you'd be like, okay, well, man. I do this broke, you know. So what? But there's some relationships you like, man, like, I wish we were still cool. Right, 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 right. But we went for so I can't really be cool with that anymore. Right. And and it comes from stuff like that. Like people just feel like, man, I'm forgotten. Mm -hmm. No matter what. Mm -hmm. But you know, people still people, you know what I'm saying? Still the same person who was that same person right. when they was when they was home. Right. So definitely, you know, if you got, you know, a loved one that's that's, that's incarcerated, reach out to them. Yeah. Right. That email. <laughs> <laughs> hey man. I, didn't know, man. I, didn't know. I mean, also got you. I mean, you know, I mean, like, man, the prison system, man, they're, they're always trying to make money. So now it's text messages. Right. You right. got email now. You can, you can text. Right. right. They make everything so easy. Before you, you would have to uh, mail the money or all that. You can go right to Western Union and. You know, think about me, I mean, okay, some, you know, I got to eat too. Right. Like, they're not paying any, like, they're not paying anything. In there, mm -hmm. so some of the same jobs, like say, say for um the postal service. So it's certain things like you can, you can work so many different jobs, and at least those same jobs you making pennies. You come out here, and you like you go put an application, the application in. They're gonna be like, oh no, you are a big family. Like man, I've been working for you for the last five, ten years. Right, right, right. right Why right, can't right. work for you now? Right, right. Here. right. You can slave job me in there. Right, right. But right. I can't do the same job on the outside. Right. That don't make sense. It don't. It don't. That don't you know, that, that's a whole other story that exactly. we talk about all the time, man, yeah. when it comes down to just the the whole way the, the entire system is built. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I just wanted to say, you know, I'm proud of you for, you know, once you got out, you were able to, you know, do what you needed to do. But you made an impact on my life. And so that's why I made sure that I, I had to make sure that, you know, I kept in contact with you because, like, Seriously, when when he got back out, oh, we picked up like we never left, like it never left off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's still my big homie. Uh, gonna be my big homie to the day we die. You know what I'm saying? So like that's it. This guy absorbs, man. Like he he absorbs like like no other. Like he write and let he write certain stuff. I'm like, you know, I don't say that one time. He was and he absorbing uh, workouts. So when he said in the house of pain, I'm like. You still, but I still got. I'm doing it right now. I, 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 I mean, implemented at school. This and that. So it, it, it didn't like take me by surprise. Like the things that he's doing now, like like mentally, like even like with the bipolar disorder. A lot, a lot of people can't really overcome it. But him to be able to overcome and and become a therapist for it's not like that. It sort of goes away. Like him able to control it and speak about it and be a therapist. Like that says a whole lot about this man yeah but look uh, i can't do it without my support though you know what i'm saying and, and like him teaching me ways to learn how to control my breathing even when i'm working out or him being able to uh teach me correct methods to be able to stretch and all that all of that stuff playing into our wellness you know and so that's these are the ways that he's helping people learn how to manage their own selves now and them be mentally well as well because i mean it takes some type of testicular fortitude to be able to you know what i'm saying push the look you see how big this guy is and this is a workout with him <laughs> like so like it takes something to really you know you got to dig down deep to be able to go to that point but man no Again, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, you know, anything, anything you want to shout out, you know what I'm saying, before we close out? You know, just, you know, shout out to everybody that was, that was, you know, my support system. Sean, S. Doc, Red Sean Miller, you know, Mike, uh, Lola, you know, my son, Mike Bill, Peanut, uh, Jermaine, Tracy, or Devon. I don't know Peanut on Devon. <laughs> Just everybody, everybody, you know, like, you know, both journeys, you know, my mother, my sisters, because, uh, like, everybody that was, like, that was, like, that was there. Um, because you, 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 you need that. You always need that when, when, you, when you're going through that journey. And then when you get out here, you know, for people to, to believe in and know that, um, you know, you can, you, can, you can change, you can do different things. 
like I said, it, it starts with, um, you know, everything starts from a thought. And then it manifests. But you gotta, you gotta keep pushing and push through and push through. Like, uh, so this is my quote of mine. My money motivation. So what happened is you always hear him say, man, 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 man. So when I was young, you know, growing up and, you know, into the other world, it was mad money, Mike. So when I when I when I went in, started doing level craft and stuff like that, I kept the same M3. So the M3 turned into my money motivation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the slogan for that is success. Money motivation grind, success motivation mind. So if you can People, if people are motivated by money, they might not be successful. But if you're motivated by success, the money will come. Mm -hmm. And that slogan is in here. Mm -hmm. So in here is, get your mind right, get motivated, and let's get this money. <laughs> and we're going to do that in a little bit. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Love you, dog. Love <laughs> you, man. Definitely. Peace, y'all. Oh, also, be on the lookout for any other interviews that are coming up. Um, be sure to check out Ultimate Fitness. If, uh, I'll definitely put the, the uh, website and everything in the uh, tagline or in the description. Make sure you uh, click the follow. Make sure that you uh, be sure to look at all of the different events that's coming up for us, uh, whether it's mental health awareness, whether it's working out, all of these, these different things. Be sure to tap in uh, because we want to make sure that you are the most wellness that you can, the most well that you can be. Uh, but no, I guess we, I appreciate it. I'm Rashawn Miller from uh, Eustress Inc. Peace, y'all.